opening up. Here we go. Woohoo! Ready to roll. Thanks. We're opening up. Hear that doorbell going, meaning everybody's jumping in here. All excited. You know, I saw Jim Bonnerdale's name on there. I was like shocked. Haven't seen him for a while. Jennifer back in town. Oh, NAB. NAB, yes, ma'am. Yeah, how's it going? So far, so good. Today's our last day of uh, educational sessions, so we'll actually get to walk the floor tomorrow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> maybe today, maybe in between sessions, we'll walk a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you want to share with us what's happening over there? I haven't even been on the show floor, so all we've done is our night flight uh, session workshop on Saturday. And then we had a couple of uh, audio and lighting and uh, diving deep into the technology of video. So those are kind of the sessions that we've done. Yeah, I, I thought I had seen you had post something about that video uh, workshop. Oh, that has got to be phenomenal. It has been fun so far. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Anybody else have any amazing drone stories that they want to share? Jim, we haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, I've been a little busy. I uh, was on a, a week-long road trip that I wrapped up last Friday. Uh, I was like across seven states doing some work. And uh, the last one, uh, amusingly enough, was supposed to be uh, across the Texas panhandle. And I don't know if you guys have saw it, but, you know, we've had weather <laughs> and uh, pull up on this job site at the Texas Panhandle and it's only blowing 35 to 45 miles an hour. So, uh, the, uh, it was interesting. the guy said, oh, well, we'll just we'll just do this tomorrow or the following day. I go, yeah, well, tomorrow I'm in Colorado. See you later. So, <laughs> oh. <Yep. laughs> oh, trying to predict the weather weather ahead of time is quite the yeah. fun, right? Quite the well, you know, I, my, my rule of thumb is four days. You give the National Weather Service four days. When you look at a 10-day forecast, I always go, okay, that could be anything. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I thought that also just being in Texas, because it started off for the uh, Women in Drones workshop, it was going to be raining on on Saturday. And then it's like, well, no, maybe. No, right. yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> hey, clear skies, go fly. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, awesome. Anybody else? Great to see everybody. I'm still letting people in here. Jeremiah, I know you've got the ball rolling for your event coming up, commercial UAV. How's that going? Really, really well. I'm locking in a lot of a lot of different pieces, as you as you know. I'm happy that you're uh, be able to be one of our moderators this year and just really excited with how all these these different pieces are coming together because that's what's interesting from my perspective is that there's so many different people doing so many different things and to be able to talk about how what all of that looks like but then kind of similar crossovers with what everybody's struggling with or what everybody has had success with and I think there's a lot everybody can learn from one another with yes yes awesome going to be a great show so much happening now right well i'm super excited to be having our guest speaker here today let me let uh felicity in here really quick like um so i will segue over i don't have any announcements today other than we have Tracy Lamb next week on the Coffee Connection. She's very inspirational. I actually have seen her presentation and it is wonderful. So I wanna make sure that I do a shout out for her joining us. And I am going to segue over and make Kimberly Penn our spotlight for everyone. I was excited to have Kimberly here because she is phenomenal. She's a business strategist for women and drones and just amazing. And when I saw her presentation uh, topic come through, incorporating AI and UAS, I was thrilled. So I am going to actually just segue over to you, uh, Kimberly. I'm going to let Amy in really quick. Like Kimberly, thank you for joining us and can't wait to hear. But before we get started with the presentation, can you just share a little bit about your path in drones or UAS? Absolutely. Good day to everyone, depending on your time zone. Uh, Kimberly Penn, uh, Chief Strategist 
uh, for Women in Thrones. And, and, and we're very excited to spend some time with you this morning. And we always appreciate you, especially Desi, for these Coffee Connects and how you get people connected to other folks, knowledge, technology, and, and, and everything else is in between. And so I'm gonna spend a little time with you, probably uh, sharing some things that you may have, certainly have some touch points on, maybe you've had some deep dives in, but I wanted to certainly bring um, to our group's attention, uh, the use of AI, which certainly hits every ad headline every day if you're watching the news in any form or fashion. And so uh, my journey to, to lead me to the seat that I'm in today, um, includes coming from a really heavy tech background. So I opened, um, outside of my role with Women in Drones, I opened the first uh, woman-owned tech firm in the state of Texas uh, 30 years ago uh, this year. And uh, we focus in on technical audits. And so that is just the lens by which um, I view the world is where's the risk? How do we mitigate that risk? Um, and, and all the things, again, in between that in terms of the ability to either triage risk, assess, analyze, and, and, and so forth. I'm super excited um, as I transferred and started to move into the UAS space. It's been, um, we're going into our fifth year for my uh, own company. And uh, so we're just coming out of startup mode. And all that I did folks was take the risk mitigation strategies that I had from the tech world and moved them over to UAS and I help uh, companies make decisions on, should they um, like buy a drone company to incorporate those services in-house? What's the risk associated with that? Um, should they um, you know, keep people on contract? What are all the, the risks that they may have? And then they hand that over to their legal team and off they go with the decision maker. And then they kick me out of the door until they may have their next UAS or risk associated conversation. Um, and so, I'm just capitalizing on the background that I've already had. And again, that brings me over to today, which I'm incredibly excited about because we've got some tools on the market that I think will help us be um, just more mindful of risk and also to mitigate risk. And in some cases, maybe as close to real time as possible. And so I'll get started with my presentation here in a little bit as soon as we get everybody in and settled. All righty, looks like we are just about ready to roll. Can't wait to see the presentation. Thank you. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so you should be able so to bring it up. In. Yes, yes, yes. Let me pull that in. Uh, and folks, please know that this is an, an interactive conversation. You're welcome to ask questions. Um, I'd like for us to have some conversation pieces. It's a short presentation overall, um, because again, I hope that it will kind of stimulate some conversation pieces and certainly some things for us to continue to read um, and, and maybe to figure out some standard operating procedures and how you can also incorporate some tech tools related to AI into your business models and use cases if you're not already doing so. All right. So feel free to put comments, questions into the chat. Good, very good. Desi, you let me know when I'm ready to roll. You are good. We can see your screen just fine. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I know we're still letting folks in and I'm excited about that. Um, it's always good to have a nice group because again, that keeps our conversation going um, and so, Again, let me get going. So my presentation today is the case of using AI, artificial intelligence, as a tool um, related to UAS and risk management, okay? Of course, you can find me on LinkedIn if you need to get in touch with me or go through the Women in Drones website in terms of uh, Kimberly Pan. Okay, so I wanna get started with what is AI? Um, we hear it quite a bit. Most of us are using AI every single day. Um, it could be related to the cars that we drive. If we're using virtual assistants, um, some of the software programs that we're using have really started to um, incorporate AI. But if we think more strategically um, about AI in the UAS space, I'm gonna dig in a little bit on that. But just overall, 
what is this deal with AI, right? And so the goals of artificial intelligence are as I have presented here in this image. It is to solve problems, right? And uh, the beginning of AI, which AI has been around for decades now, but as we've seen it really, really streamline and become a forefront in, in the conversations that we have and, and business uses, it is to do tasks that human beings uh, don't need to do any longer, right? Now, once we incorporate into AI, uh, machine learning, that moves us in a different direction. And again, I'll talk about that here shortly. So the goals of any use of AI first is to solve problems and the ability to do so, um, hopefully more efficiently, maybe faster, um, maybe move into some layers and, and give us some, some inputs or outputs a lot faster than you and I can do. And so that's one of the specific goals related to AI. It is also an amazing piece with AI is that it has the ability to continuously learn, right? So we can continue to give an AI model or a bot or a question, um, more and more data points, and it can continue to build upon that. And so say we start working on something today, which is Tuesday, we get some more data points in a week, we can incorporate those into an AI model and it will continue to learn um, and then at some point, we hope that it can apply what it's learned into the ability to help us with operating procedures, for example, okay? AI also encourages social intelligence. Now that's a controversial one. I, I hear people saying, you know, we're heading towards the Terminator movies and, and Skynet and, and these machines are gonna start turning themselves on and, and, and doing things that we uh, don't want them necessarily to do. Um, of course, we need to be gatekeepers of any technology. The more we know, uh, the less fearful we may be as well as the public may be. But ultimately the goal is to, to encourage a level of social intelligence in these uh, computer programs and, and so that it can think and behave similar to you and I, but again, hopefully it can uh, process information faster and maybe give us some things to think about in terms of risk, for example. Um, AI allows us to promote creativity. If we can move away from some of the mundane tasks that we may have, um, if we think about in UAS, like some of the checklists that we have, incredibly important for safety, obviously, um, when we're doing pre-flight checklists and things, but if we had the ability to use a tool that can engage and interact with either uh, the drone pilots who have the controllers in their hands, or the maintenance crew that may be doing, you know, again, that pre-flight checklist, even before they hand off equipment, we may have the opportunity to then spend more time on being creative in our space, which I think is really important in order for us to figure out the direction of our industry overall, okay? Another goal of artificial intelligence is really the ability to, to merge or to synergize human interaction and thinking with the ability for AI, which has, again, that continuous learning component, just like human beings do, into a synergy that can be beneficial um, for us as human beings, as drone pilots, drone operators, software, data analytics, all the pieces, and create something better than what we may be doing today. So better than what you and I are doing in our companies um, by incorporating more technology and really moving the UAS space um, among other industries into something that maybe we haven't seen before because the potential really continues to grow and expand, okay? So again, some of the goals of artificial intelligence, these are some of the universal uh, concepts associated with AI. There's lots of things in between and some folks would even expand upon uh, what are the goals of artificial intelligence. One thing I want you to move, look at before I move from this slide is it's the goals. It's not the definition. We can define artificial intelligence uh, very easy. You can Google that and you'll get something. Matter of fact, if I Google it right here, it's the development of computer systems to perform tasks that normally human beings do, right? This is not the definition. These are some of the goals. How can we then use AI and apply them? And of course, again, move them over into our space. I'm gonna head over to the next slide. I, I already love the part about promoting creativity. Yes, you yes, know, yes. I, I, I find myself where you get so engrossed in all of the business activities and doing all the business side of things that I stifle that creativity to getting Definitely. out there and promoting my business or whatever it is. 
Correct. And AI can help you on the technical side as well as on the business side. And so um, it can take some tasks away that may be more mundane to you. And that can vary from, um, you know, one business owner or, or one employee to the next in terms of what those things look like. But the ability to have more time for us to be creative often leads to some amazing innovation. And, and that's an important thing in the field as well. All right. So one of the things when I started preparing uh, for this presentation and discussion today is I went in and, and looked at how the FAA defines risk, okay? So the FAA defines risk as the probability and possible severity of accident or loss from exposure to various hazards, right? And so we know that our, our airspace is highly restricted. There's a lot of safety uh, pieces built in, which is why we're required to have the varying uh, licenses or certifications, you know, 107, uh, we need to have drones that are insured um, and, and, and to operate and fly with public safety being paramount to every mission that we may have. And so when we look at how the FAA defines risk and we come over and say, we're all operating under this risk umbrella or bubble, so to speak, how can AI help us with managing um, these particular risks that we are, are very much aware of and some things that we need to be mindful of that may be situational based upon maybe a particular geographical area that we may be working in. When we incorporate AI into risk management, it really does help us drive our operational efficiencies and some of our costs. The more efficient we are, we can also typically quantify that into some cost savings. Um, if we're able to do particular tasks faster, um, that can often equate into some cost savings or allow us to bill in a particular way. But it's important to really kind of understand what are our operational and cost pieces and its efficiency, how do we define that? Um, I know in, in my particular space related to risk, I always say speed kills. And so I'm not always looking to go faster with particular tasks I may have with my UAS company and, and even in how I support uh, women in drones, you know, we're not, again, trying to move as quickly as possible, but if we can be as efficient as possible, I think any business model um, can really appreciate and at some point learn how to get some ROI or return on investment in that particular piece. If I go back to um, like our pre-flight checklist, for example, or our post-flight checklist, um, the operational steps that are required, we're not suggesting that AI says, don't do these checklists. Or if you have 15 or 20 steps in a checklist, knock six or seven out. But if we can automate those in some form or fashion, or if we have um, the ability to use an AI tool and it identifies that our pre-flight checklist is this, once we enter information related to our post-flight, there's some patterns that may come about. The AI tool may be able to help you identify those types of patterns. Maybe it's in your batteries are overheating and, and there's some wear and tear and you're getting some information from your controller, you know, from the software for flight. But again, the AI tool may be able to help you really look at the efficiencies in terms of how you're operating. And then you as the uh, human being and, and, and this relationship with AI and managing risk can then make some decisions um, that again, these patterns that are brought to your attention may better help you in terms of flowing through your organization. Okay, One of the important pieces in terms of the use of AI and risk management is how is AI adopted? There are some organizations that are moving incredibly slow um, with adopting AI. Understandably, they have to really understand what AI does, um, what data um, uh, AI tools may have access to? Is that going to compromise data in some form or fashion? Um, is there some privacy issues um, associated with the use of AI tools that, again, can be brought into our environment, but it may also need to exit our environment in some form or fashion in order for processing to take place? So it's important that we really research the different types of AI tools, which I'll talk about here shortly, so that you can build a strategy of adoption and also buy-in with your, your team members or your employees, and maybe even with your customers. And so I really wanna uh, make sure that with your notes, please jot down 
having a really successful adoption of AI tools and what that campaign can look like for your organization. We've got a lot of uh, public perception related to AI, much of it in terms of what we are hearing, what we're seeing, what people are Googling, um, some of the questions that they're asking text experts and, and data analysts is pretty negative. It's not necessarily that it's being well embraced. People are often fearful of things they don't quite understand. And so if you're at a place where you're deciding on bringing a, um, a particular AI tool or tools into your organization to, to help you be as efficient as possible, please know it, it's going to require a level of education um, in order for your team members, again, or employees to really understand how this is going to help them uh, get the work done. Uh, they may be, again, more efficient, and that is not necessarily just going to replace people um, by introducing tools, and all of a sudden you can just let go, you know, three people because these tools can do particular things. So, again, a successful adoption, I can't stress enough how important that is. And then once people can adopt, understand, have standard operating procedures, now you can use AI, AI to do some of the management of risks that you have by creating the types of use of these tools to help you again identify risk and mitigate the risk associated, okay? I think that AI, in my professional opinion, is a great equalizer. And so that last bullet that I have there, if you're a solo, you know, a drone company in terms of you're the, the sole employee or proprietor of your organization, or you're part of a large enterprise-based um, organization, the use of these AI tools are really in the next year or two, I'm not saying five or 10 years from now, are going to really bring about the opportunity for small companies to shift very quickly into the ability to compete with some of the larger ones by adopting tools, um, managing risk, and being as efficient as possible to help them grow and scale faster. And for those larger companies who will continue to do some of their processes and procedures, maybe more paper oriented, and although they're using cloud-based services and, and some other uh, tools, the lack of automation that can come from not using AI related tools may be a hindrance to their organization and ultimately their ability to continue to grow. Um, as some of the smaller firms get lean and mean, and again, use tools that are readily available that have an AI component. Okay, do I have some questions down here? Let me see, looking good? I didn't see any just yet, so okay. feel free to ask questions. Um, I have a couple of questions as far as finding a great uh, AI applications, but I think you're going to be covering some of that in future slide decks. Um, one of the drone pros for San Diego is one of the first ones I know that has implemented some sort of a AI program. Wyatt has created a checklist for his risk management. And, yes. and so I see that expanding out in many, many different ways. Absolutely. That For, for me, that's one of the uh, first uses that I have is um, creating or redoing, I should say, um, the, the varying checklists that we have, pre, post-flight, accident reports, incident reports, um, and everything in between um, that we do. Uh, we've redone our job descriptions or our VO role descriptions using AI. Um, and not that it types or something faster than you. It can really pull from a no number of sources and give you um, some feedback based upon what you may be doing. And, and after you entered information. She you know, answered sort of the fence to bark. Somebody, if I, someone could please mute, 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 that'd be great. I think Thank I got you. it. I think I got okay, it. no problem. Thank you. Um, again, it, the use of these AI tools can, they're not going to take the place of your checklist pieces. It can bring about a level of um, automation, but also can help you identify patterns and fill in some areas where you may not be um, as concentrating and seeing the patterns that are associated with something that may be um, you, something, a risk that you can mitigate sooner than later, if that makes sense. All right, here are some of the tools that I want you to make sure that you write down. And here's why I want you to write these down, because you, every single person that's um, listening today can sign up to have access to these tools as quickly as possible, right? Right now, there's not some big fees 
associated because a lot of these tools are um, either fully launched or in the development stage. And so they're looking for folks to use the tools, the companies that um, bring about these particular tools. I'm gonna to talk about them here in just a second, but they're also looking for feedback. Um, and so if you've never been a, um, a developer or a beta tester, I'm not asking you to learn a bunch of code, I'm encouraging you to get your hands on these particular three tools um, so that you can not only contribute to how they'll grow and expand, but also test in your environment. How can you use these tools to again, bring about some um, cost efficiencies and some operational efficiencies. So the one that you may hear more frequently is chat GPT. Um, I am a part of a, a legal tech program every summer. It's based uh, out of Germany, Becerra's Law School. They have this fantastic summer long um, program. Of course, the last few years it's been virtual because of COVID and as we're on this other side of it, um, we're learning a lot about these tools and which is why I wanted to share some of this. This chat GPT has done some incredible things that have left uh, many of us uh, at a place where we're trying to understand the capabilities or maybe the language should be the limitations of these tools. ChatGPT recently passed a United States state bar exam. Okay, so I'm gonna say that again. This AI tool, which is um, something that's capable of learning and applying um, information based upon data, was able to take a state bar exam and pass that bar exam. And so, just some backstory on this particular tool is uh, less than a year ago, ChatGPT uh, attempted a bar exam and it got a 36%, which of course we know is not passing. Uh, the second version attempted, it also did not pass, but it did better than 36%. By the time it got to the fourth um, version of ChatGPT, it passed with over 80% on this state bar exam. That's pretty amazing. Um, of course, we're not all necessarily all attorneys. Um, however, the ability for this tool within less than a year to process enough data and have an understanding, for lack of a phrase, um, all the questions associated with the legal um, exam, which uh, most people, when you look at the data, don't pass. More than 50% of folks who take a bar exam don't pass the first time out. They often are ready, you know, that second time. Think about how we can apply a tool like ChatGPT to our environment. The risk strategies that we need to have, um, feeding enough data to ChatGPT to say, are there some risks that I'm not readily identifying or being as mindful of? Or if I want to move over into, say, uh, UAS and uh, delivery, I really want to start exploring. Um, what is that going to look like for my company versus some of the other companies that are continuously exploring, but also have budgets that can allow them to do so? A tool like ChatGPT can pull data sources, not only just from the web, but uh, other sources that you can plug and play into it and help you with not only the language, but allow for the reporting so that you can um, have information readily available and give you some suggestions on uh, what it was able to find. And so it almost in, can interpret the information for you so that you can make some decisions accordingly. So chat GPT is out on the market. It is the fastest um, acquired, and when I say acquired in terms of people signing up tool um, or software application that has ever existed, okay? Hundreds of thousands of people are signing up for it every week. There's never been another software application that's been adapted at this speed in software history. What does that mean? There's a lot of data associated with chat GPT. It's important before you introduce these tools that you read and understand what will it have access to and how will it have access to data outside um, of your particular environment. But that's pretty exciting um, because that means a lot of people in across different industries are, are using chat GPT for a number of different things, marketing, public relations, um, you know, calculating return on investment. But risk is one of those areas that really cuts across industries. And so uh, please entertain 
researching chat GPT and how it can be beneficial to your organization. I think there I saw a hand up. Yeah, we do. We have a question from James. I'm ready. So okay. if James, if you would like to unmute. Uh, I put a question in their chat. How many people are using uh, chat GPT? And only one person replied. So okay. go, on. go on, put it on there. Who's using chat GPT? I know there's more than just one person. Right? I'm going to raise my hand. All right. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, James, you had a question? Oops. Yeah, I wanted to comment because, um, okay. you know, this whole AI topic, I, I've been reading a lot on it lately. Yes. And I think it has a lot of value for um, for drones. Yes. Um, so Chachi, uh, Lex Friedman is a guy I've been watching a lot. I don't know if you're tuned into him or not, but he's been uh, there's a lot of debate going on about uh, AI right now. And there's a lot of jobs uh, mm -hmm. right now. I mean, it's kind of going geometrically uh, for people that have computer science or math degrees or going into uh, AI. But there's some uh, debate about um, uh, whether, you know, AI is going to be helpful or harmful <laughs> in our world. So we'll, we'll see how it all plays out. But I do think it's really important for drones. Just a, a comment, um, please check out ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a judge, Judge Warren, uh, used the chat GPT to uh, research a legal case, and he put the legal case in the chat GPT thing to see if it uh, would come up with the right answer, and it failed to define, identify a very important case in Michigan law. So mm -hmm. um, don't always believe everything that you read, <laughs> but I think it will get better. Anyway, uh, really appreciate the topic. Over. No, no problem. Yes, yes, and and I would agree. You know, this these types of tools, and I'll talk about the other two here in just a moment. Uh, their ability to compile information um, is something that will be much faster than you and I. Now, you can say, uh, technically speaking. Well, Google compiles information faster than I do, right? You type in something and it says 15.6 million um, iterations or, or findings of some sort, um, results, I think it, they call it, are, are displayed. Most of us don't go past that first page when we're using Google or comparable types of search engines. I'm not just prone to using Google or nor do I sell Google shares or something like that, right? Um, but when we're using these types of tools, we do have to be a healthy skeptics. And again, it's helping us with getting to more information. And, and I liken, um, I teach a UAS program uh, at, a, at a community college here, and I'm in Houston, Texas. Um, and when I'm asking students to use these types of tools, but also to uh, use other data points, I always uh, require that they be healthy skeptics and that they understand very similar to when we make um, like aeronautical decision-making, you have to have a number of different data points or sources that you're pulling from, including yourself in order to make a solid or a sound aeronautical decision. So I, I hope that makes some sense and that uh, chat GPT is, and, and these other comparable AI tools are not going to do any and everything for us. And, and, and I'm sure that we're not necessarily thinking that, but their ability to continue to learn is where the game changers are, like the difference between a, a Google search engine or a Bing search engine results comparable to what ChatGPT uh, can bring forth and, and, and share with you uh, in terms of what, how you're processing or asking some questions. Okay? Another tool that's available is BARD. Um, BARD is the Google um, AI tool, and, and that tool it has a wait list um, some people are moving very quickly um, through um, having access to BARB, and some folks I know have, have um, said they're still on the wait list even for a couple of months. I encourage you to Google BARB. It's a Google tool. Get on the wait list and you'll receive notification uh, that is available. And, and then just kind of, if you have a, you know, some particular machine that you like to use or a, a laptop that you'd like to use, Put BARP on there, it's browser-based. Put ChatGPT on there. Again, it's also browser-based. 
and, and then test it out. Um, be very, I want to, I can't reiterate enough, read the terms of agreement and service. Um, and there's some tools, by the way, that can allow you to copy and paste so you can get it in more plain English even or plain you know, language of your choice to better understand what you're agreeing to and what will these types of tools have access to for how long and so forth and so on. Um, BARB is, is uh, something that I'm testing out right now. I haven't done a full incorporation into uh, my uh, business environment because I'm still beta testing it as a beta tester, but also in how it's going to help me. But uh, now I have another tool by which I can compare the results of chat GPT and BARB. I can ask them the same question and see what the results are in terms of how it presents the information. And these tools don't cost you anything. Will that be a cost in the future? Perhaps, but certainly not at this particular time. And then Copilot is the, uh, the other uh, leading tool. There's more in between, but these three are probably the most uh, name recognition. Um, that's a Microsoft tool. If any of you are Microsoft or MS365 users, uh, you will receive a notification that Copilot has been incorporated into your dashboard. So if, if again, if you're using MS365, it used to be Office 365, um, at some point you will see Copilot available. It's an AI tool that will work across your applications such as PowerPoint, Word, um, assist you with uses uh, associated with OneDrive. You say, well, what's that got to do with drones, right? Where we're keeping and storing uh, some of our checklists, some of our write-ups, um, how we're incorporating the, the pulling of data, some of us may be still using Excel. That's not a bad thing because in some uh, inventory systems and things, it may really work well. Your ability, again, to pull Copilot into your office ecosystem um, is, is going to be readily available to you at no additional charge. And if you did not know about Copilot, go and check. Open up your MS365 dashboard. Typically on the left-hand side, you've got these little you know, uh, dots and you click there and you see more applications that are associated with your account. See if you see Copilot there or just search within the dashboard and then get more information in terms of how it's being incorporated into that environment. Okay, so I know my time is, is cutting close. I wanted to add the following before we take some more questions here. Okay. The use of AI and our ability to program drones is really where we're heading in terms of uh, in, in a low hanging fruit type of use case um, in the UAS industry, right? We already have autonomous flight. If we were able to talk to a particular program, I'm talking about using um, language that we're using right now today, such as how I'm speaking and engage or interact um, with our software, that AI tool, can uh, work towards creating the programming language that then will talk directly to that application. So it can almost act like a, um, a translator of sorts between how we may at some point here in the very near future say, okay, drone, I need you to go fly a uh, hundred acres. Um, I want thermal and, and different pieces. I'm, I'm just kind of, obviously in real time, I'm um, making that example. And I need to know how many batteries, so forth and so on. How can I make the best decision about this project? And then it could give you that kind of information, but it also can work towards the programming side of um, more than just what the dashboard or, or a particular application, PIX4D or whatever those things may be that you use by these AI tools and safeguard you know, your assets, your people, and the ability to make some really good decisions. Um, and whatever that means to you, cost associated, safety associated, and most certainly the ability to mitigate some of the risk associated with um, AI, flight, autonomous flight, and so forth. All right, I see I've got some questions in there, so let me jump this piece and then we can get these questions going or some conversation pieces. Ms. Desi, do you see anything in there that I've missed? So up at the top, kind of scrolling back up again. Uh, yes. Circling back to the chat GTP, um, Roseanne had asked, what subjects are AI used with for chat members? Okay, okay. Um, so 
Um, Roseanne, can you take your mic off and ask me that question directly? Because I want to make sure I'm understanding um, what your question is asking. Hi, um, I have construction here, so it's very loud. I'm sorry if it's noisy. Oh. I'm just wondering, like, we have about six members in our chat that said they'd started using it. So I was just interested in, like, you know, what, what was their jumping off spot and what interest did they have in using the tech? Ah, very good. Thank you, thank you, and great question. Let's see, I see Dr. LaQuinta is on there. Can you give us an example? I know that as an educator, a drone guru, can you share uh, how you might be looking and in terms of incorporating chat GPT into your business model or to your curriculum or content? Well, you all know that I am a, uh, a tech guru. So I was on the chat GPT when it first started, um, even playing around with some of the um, app development, um, a lot of um, what that you can actually put in code and it can tell you what parts of the code is incorrect and what is correct. Um, I played around with, uh, oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me, can you hear me now? Much better. Much better. better. Yeah. Woo yeah. I have a little fancy mic over there. Sorry about that. <laughs> Talking to somebody um, else. <laughs> yeah, so I've used it for building um, basic applications, uh, computer apps, um, even testing my students' codes for their Arduino boards to um, assisting with formulating words because I'm a tech person. So I don't have much words a lot of times in writing emails. So I may drop in three or four sentences and say, rewrite this and it rewrites it. Um, give bullet points, um, give me talking points. I mean, um, yeah, I, I I actually pay the uh the 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 twenty dollars a month. Uh, <laughs> so you're getting yeah. your money's worth. Yes, yeah, you're I get I get my worth. money's worth. So um, it and it has it helps. Yeah, I mean, and I and I agree that it does not take away my job, but it actually helps me produce things much quicker. That it may have taken me thirty minutes to formulate a proper email to send on a particular topic, but I can put in the topic points. And now you do have to read it because it can put in some things that you'd be like, what, what, did, where did that come from? So, but it helps me formulate those things much quicker um, than being, and even feedback from our students as a professor, um, I can quickly give feedback as well. Um, I, it can help me formulate some feedback quotes uh, than me having to take 20 minutes to figure out what feedback I need to give my students on a particular programming pro problem. Excellent use case and, and example. Yes. Thank you for sharing that with us. And, and I hadn't even touched into, you know, the ability for it to assist you with marketing, um, proposal design, PR, um, SOPs themselves, uh, and, and so forth. So um, again, I encourage you to, to look at it, check it out, and also be adventurous so that you can utilize this to, to leverage uh, not only your time, which is our most valuable resource, everyone, um, but also the ability to get some tasks and things done that um, can really just be supportive in your overall environment, regardless of your company size. On the marketing side, I did put in for it to list certain competitors and certain businesses, mm -hmm. and it did give, um, uh, it gave a sample. Of, it, it will tell you I'm an AI system. And I can't give you detailed information, but here are some examples or here are some samples and they give you um, different businesses and they give you what the businesses are doing as well. So it, it definitely can help with marketing as well. Very yes. good. Thank you. I see it so valuable in, in that business aspect of it and in social media. You know, when you're trying to promote your business and you're trying to put something creative out there and it feels like a lot of the information you feel like after you've done it so much, it's stale. And so it works as a tool to just try to put something more fresh and lively out there. And like Laquata said, in both Kimberly and Laquata said, you do need to monitor it. You can't just copy paste and say you're good to go, but it gives you that stepping stone. Here's some information to build on, you know, and so it's been a valuable tool for me. And yeah. so 
I, I was excited when I was hearing about this. Now, the other two, I'll be honest, the other two programs I haven't heard much about, so I'm excited to dive deep into those. So let's throw this into the chat. Does anybody have any questions for one? But is anybody planning to use? I did see there were actually a few people that are using the chat GTP, but uh, some people are now thinking, yes, I'm going to try it. So if you have anything that you'd like to throw into the chat, that would be great. Oh, we got one in here. <laughs> it's, it's all, it's you. Okay. Well, Kimberly has said, <laughs> use all <laughs> the tools. And that's true in all things with your business. You know, you can't, you can't just have one size fits all for so many things. And so you want to capitalize on all the resources available. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I so, will drop yeah. a couple of tools in there if uh, you got a second. Uh, Why? Of course the, we do. There's the steve.ai, and it actually helps with creating videos, um, not just your basic uh, videos. Like uh, it's, an ana it's like an animation type video. So you can actually put your script in there, and it'll actually formulate a video for you if you're looking to make videos. Um, and there's a couple of other ones that I use, but I'll drop them in the chat for us. But steve.ai is one of my favorites. Thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you for dropping that in there. So that's in our chat. So of course we wanna make sure that we have saved the chat when we get ready to wrap this up. So there we go. And Kimberly's put the other two in there as well. And so you can utilize all those resources available and start elevating your businesses and safety you know you you hit the key right there when you're saying safety and risk management and and it's probably something that we don't think about enough that we can incorporate these tools into using it for safety and risk management so all right well, we are running up at the top of the hour where I usually like to cut off so that people have time to segue over to any other meetings that they may have. So really quick, like Kimberly, can you share one last tip for what you would suggest for someone that is just getting out there and getting started and wanting to move forward with business and safety and utilizing the AI? Oh, wait, you're, mu you're muted. Hold on. Pardon me. Sorry, that you was me. great now. You're okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, absolutely. Uh, one, you know, keep a safety and especially public safety lens in everything that you do, whether you're uh, indoors or outdoors, read as much as possible um, and understand, uh, again, what we're required to do um, in order to safeguard the public and certainly our teams and so forth. And so if you're getting started, you're wanting to look at these tools, research the tools that we've dropped into the chat. There's so many other tools. Uh, for example, um, I'm a horrible typer and I'm okay with that. I've, I've done just fine in life, not being the best typer in the world, but I use an AI tool now that I can incorporate into all of my Zoom and Team and WebEx and all the other virtual software, uh, meeting software programs. And it takes my notes and transcribes for me. And so, I invite it to the meetings, it, it jumps in. Um, I can decline it and tell it I don't want it to be part of a meeting. And as soon as we hang up, it transcribes all the conversations from everyone involved and sends them to everyone that was invited to the meeting. That used to take me not only forever because I could never do it that way. So I, it would take me forever and ever, and ever and ever. But be adventurous, but research and understand where your data is and how your data and things are being used but also just get out there and see. A lot of these tools don't cost us anything but our time. Again, most valuable resource. And then off you can go. Uh, but the more you know about safety, I think the better uh, you, you will navigate this particular space, if I may say. Awesome, awesome. Okay, wait, now I want to back up a second. I know we said we were gonna wrap up, but what tool is it that you're using that transcribes? Cause I'm liking that. <laughs> uh, let me tell you here. Hang on. Okay, I'll put it in the chat, folks. It's called Fireflies. I have to look up everything because it's on my computer. There's a number of tools like it. Yeah. Oh, and again, yeah. Otter, Otter is another one. Otter, yeah, Otter is another one. But yes, 
feel free. If you guys need something, I will put my LinkedIn in the chat. Hang on here. And then you can always reach out to me. Um, it's a pleasure to work with you all, to connect with you, and to learn from each of you as well. I can't believe how fast this hour went. <laughs> Such great information. Don't forget to save the chat. Really a lot of great information there. We thank you so, so much. And Kimberly, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing with us. And I look forward to next week. Good to see everybody. I enjoy our Tuesday mornings. And so don't forget to save the chat. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. That kind of wraps it up.